I'd like to welcome our first guest on the program as we uh, move into a pretty packed agenda, and we're really happy to have him spend some time with us. Uh, Jeff Rizzolara, who is Chief Clinical Officer with Vivere uh, out of Dallas, Texas, uh, one of the leading workplace wellness uh, providers. Uh, Jeff, good morning, and welcome to our program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Hey, nice to have you on the program. Before we kind of take a deep dive into some of these discussion points, um, give our audience a little ba- uh, background on the, what you guys are doing out there. Uh, it, I'll tell you what, it's busy every day. But very continues to innovate, and you know we're working with employers across the country on anything from biometric screenings to health coaching to disease management. Um, continue to make a portal that people want to get into and continue to go back to time and time throughout the day. So we're just, you know, helping clients change their culture, helping employees change their behaviors, and just trying to help them manage healthcare costs overall. Yeah. Hey, hey Jeff, when, when we talk about disease management a little bit, I mean, some, um, you know, a couple of years ago, disease management kind of took a pretty bad hit because of some ROI that they weren't delivering. And and my feeling is that today, sometimes disease management is kind of this forgotten component into a well-rounded wellness program. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, some of that comes from just the low identification rates that these you know, DM programs typically get. And so I think coupling it with a wellness program, what we found is that we could really increase the identification, the number of people that are first identified and then that we can reach out to and get to participate. And I think that's the key is, is if you have low identification and participation, you're just not going to get the results you want. But when you couple with that wellness program, we found that to be a real kicker to really kick up the people involved in the program and, and see the type of results that I think clients are expecting. So, so, so that and what else is kind of uniquely uh, different uh, that Vivere is doing uh, from kind of some of the other competitors out there? Right. Well, the biggest thing is that we, we identify 22 conditions. So typically most, um, most DM providers are looking at the top five, things like asthma, COPD, diabetes. Well, we've taken those and expand it to 22 conditions. So what we, you know, our belief is that let's get to the things like high blood pressure and hypertension and back pain and osteoarthritis, things that people often overlook, but those are big cost drivers. And if we can get to those early, help people make some changes in behaviors and maybe keep those from manifesting into diabetes and heart disease and some of the big cost drivers. So that's our, that's our big differentiator is that we expanded that into 22 conditions also, we couple it with our wellness program. So when they're speaking to a, a disease management expert, a dietitian, or a nurse, they're not just talking about their condition. We're talking about their wellness program. We're talking about getting online and taking activities and courses and getting to their doctor to make sure they get their preventive care done and all those other things that make up the person's life other than their condition. So if you just focus on the condition, a lot of times you're going to lose that person. If you can tie that DM program into wellness incentives and and their regular daily lifestyle, I think you're, you know the chances of making a bigger impact on that is much greater. So, so if I'm an employer and I'm, um, uh, what are the key considerations that I should take into account uh, when looking to embrace the disease management component as part of my overall, you know, uh, wellness initiative? Well, again, I think make sure that they're going to look at more than just the top five conditions that are typically part of every DM program. Because you're not going to get to everybody that way, and such a small per, you know, per, a percent of the participation is going to be from that group. If you can expand that, you can see up to 55 60% of your population identified. Get those individuals into talking with the dietitian and nurse. Get them talking about other things other than that condition, getting to their doctor, making sure that they're active, they're eating correctly, they're managing their stress. And I think that's the great thing is they're working with the clinician, but at the same time, they're not just talking about those conditions. So I think that's number one. Make sure that the employer or that you know, the employer has to look for a group and a vendor that can actually provide more than just those five typical conditions. The other thing is make sure that they can incentivize it and make it part of the wellness program. That's through creative incentive management, creative program creation, and, and I think those are the things that the employer has to look for before signing on to a DM program. And then when you take the, the, the other practical considerations for doing that is that, you know, A, you're going to take better care of your employees. You're going to, you know, <clears throat> make sure you enhance <clears throat> your productivity, but you're also going to, you know, 
you know, protect your healthcare bubble from bursting too, correct? I mean, if we, you know, we, we, you know, we have to focus on, on keeping the well well, but if you don't address those with these conditions, we're not taking care of them. We're not maintaining good productivity and we're, we're not really doing all we can to bend that cost curve, correct? Right. And, and what happens is, you know, there are people migrating into the unhealthy side every day. So yep. it's typical to say, let's just look at the small group today that might be unhealthy and have these big conditions. But we're looking at everybody. We're looking at the total population because if you don't watch them, they are going to be your high cost people within either a year, three years, five years, somewhere down the line, they're going to be impacting you. And, and that's, you know, again, that's where it starts out normally ROI. Let's see what we can do. How, how, you know, how can we, bend the cost curve? How can we slow down the cost and increase things? So that's where it begins, but then it really gets down to engagement, total behavior change, and just a happier, healthier culture and a happier, healthier employer leads to a more productive employee. So so what type of research went into uh, your expansion of your DM program? Right. So this could, yeah, and this a couple of things. One is we, can, we look at ourselves as a test kitchen, so we try everything out on our own employees. I mean, we have a very healthy, a younger workforce, but we certainly still have conditions that can you know, manifest and cause some, cause some, some pain on the, on the dollar sign. So we try these programs on ourselves first. We also did research and really looked at what are the big cost drivers. Let's make sure that the conditions that we are looking at every day and you know, expanding to our conditions that are going to eventually or even immediately start driving costs. So that was the research that we, we really took into. We have an active medical advisory board. They look at these conditions. They make sure that you know, our care plans are all evidence-based and that they can lead to the best results for both the, both the member and the employer. Yeah. So, so talk a little bit about, um, you know, you, you're putting a program in place. You know, um, communications and engagement is incredibly important. Correct. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it. Oh, go ahead. No, no. I just wanted to expand on that. What kind of things you guys are doing to, you know, make sure that communication is clear and concise and and on a regular basis, and how you you know work on engagement. Right. So it can it can come from two different ways. One is setting up the original communication that's going to go out to the employees to make sure that they understand what the program is. And you have to meet them where they are. So some, some are okay doing an email. Some are okay doing, you know, old school mail out. Some are okay putting posters up around the company. It just depends on the culture. So you really have to do a, a deep dive into your culture and make sure what's the best way to get that word out. Then when it comes down to the actual coaching, you've got to be able to coach face-to-face or, you know, via text messaging or through phone through secure email, it, you have to be able to meet the member what's most comfortable with them to get them to participate. So our con, you know, communication begins well before the program ever starts, and it continues day in and day out. I mean, the, we find the clients that really adopt and embrace active communication, ongoing communication, and targeted communication are the ones who are most happy with the results because they have high um, awareness, they have high participation, more people getting involved, they're going to see the results that they're looking for. What are, um, when it comes to in, in engaging employers out there and getting them, you know, on board with what you're doing, what what are what are some of the biggest hurdles to get over and kind of getting them to to seek to understand, you know, the uniqueness about what you guys are doing? Yeah, the probably it starts with you've got to have the buy-in from the top leadership. They, okay. you know, they've got to, they've got to sign it. They've got to sign off on it. They've got to adopt it themselves. They've got to be examples of that. They certainly don't have to be in the best shape. They've just got to be active participants and definitely willing to, to be out there and encourage everybody to stay involved. So that's, that's usually the toughest part. Once you can get the leadership buy-in, then it's just a matter of sitting down, mapping out what the program's going to look like, and, you know, again, going back to communication, making sure that the incentives are meaningful to that particular environment, make sure the culture is changing because if you can set that culture up, and that's a big shift. You know, a lot of times you've got cultures that have been in place for, you know, 30 or 40 years and you're coming in saying, well, here's some, some small changes we need to make. We need to make, you know, maybe do a two-minute drill in the middle of the day where everybody stops, does two minutes of t- some type of exercise. Well, that's a big change for a company that's used to driving and driving eight hours a day. So I think really getting to know the culture, 
um, working with them. But the you know, that first thing is getting the leadership buy-in and the willingness to you know, be open to ideas on how to adopt a healthier culture so that the employees can stay motivated. Yeah, that's good. Um, you, know, you know, we live in a digital age. What are the type of things that, that, that you're doing there um, to really uh, embrace, you know, the digital tools that are in the marketplace for better member engagement, <laughs> monitoring, et cetera? Well, everything has to be accessible via mobile. You know, so whatever the, you know, whatever your pick is for the way that you communicate and get information, we have to have the wellness services available there. So whether it's somebody's phone, whether it's somebody's you know, computer, whether it's a TV these days, it's, we have to be there. It has to be usable. It has to be relevant. So we're continually making sure that those things are done. I mean, we have product teams that just look at the best way to innovate and just keep, keep it fresh. I mean, that's the other big challenge is keeping information fresh because a lot of times – you know, the, the recommendations for managing diabetes and managing heart disease, they don't change dramatically, but keeping that content fresh so that people want to keep going back in and see if there's something new that they can learn, that's the biggest challenge. And then from a coaching aspect, it's always looking at what's the best way to communicate with the individual. Again, it might be, you know, it might be face-to-face on site. We, have, we see a lot of employers looking at on-site coaches and on-site um, diabetes educators to help you know, get the people who that's the best way to get to them and, and manage their condition. But then other ones want to do telephonics. Some want to do secure email. Some want to do chat. Some want to do um, video chat. So you just have to be ready and able to meet the member where they are but provide the communication method and mode that they're most interested in using. Yeah. Jeff, um, is, there, is there a specific employer target size that, that you guys work with, or do you cover the gamut of the various size employers? I mean, tell me, you, you know, is there a range? Right. We have a sweet spot, you know, 2,500 to 5,000, but we have clients that have 100,000 employees. We have clients that have 500 employees. We'll work with any size client. Um, you know, mid-market is typically where we find most of our business coming from, but we've had great success with really large clients because we just, again, are adaptable, we're scalable, we can, we can meet them where they are with their needs. And at the same time, we're willing to go, you know, with the, with the smaller clients. A lot, of, a lot of the bigger health management and wellness providers don't want to work with the smaller clients. We're, we're happy to work with clients of all size. That's great. Jeff, listen, it's been great having you on the program today, and I want to give you an opportunity to kind of recap this discussion and leave our audience with uh, a couple takeaways, if you would, please. Okay. Well, first thing I do want to say is that, you know, we have, and when it comes down to the disease management, that's the, that's the big topic of the day, the, the expansion of the 22 conditions. And, and we have a call center, we call our call center a health center, but we have a call center that just received a Stevie Award in, internationally recognized for the service it gets. We get tons of inbound calls, over 20,000 inbound calls, helping members either, you know, figure out what their way around their program, set up coaching sessions. Our coaches are very active. And Vivari is just that company that can really assist and help any client that's really interested in making an impact on their employees' health and on their bottom line. So we're definitely that, that employer that can do that. Well, Jeff, really, I uh, appreciated this discussion. appreciate your time. Uh, enjoy your weekend in Dallas, and uh, look forward to talking with you and your team uh, sometime in the near future again. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it.